So at the, uh, the essence of everything that I do and most rock players do is really rooted in the blues. Um, blues is a very simple uh, scale, obviously, um, but I find myself in the 40 years I've been playing guitar always going back to the rudimentary shapes that I started with and then just embellishing on that. So, um, for instance, when I first sit down to practice or play a guitar and I pick a guitar up, the first thing I do is say I'll start in the key of A and I'll start with a very rudimentary shape, which is, you know, right off the A string. <laughs> Okay, and then what I, the way I think, logically, is I think, how can I make that sound different than everybody else? And I do that almost uh, subconsciously or unconsciously. I think, how can I make, differentiate myself from the average player, playing something pretty normal and changing a few things uh, to kind of create my own trademark uh, phrasing. And very early on, even in my teens, what I started doing was, uh, and not knowing theory, what I started doing was just adding flats and sharps, basically. That's the simplest way I can put it. So, for instance, in uh, the pentatonic shape in A, what I would do is, uh, for instance, flat the E to E flat, and then drop it down to uh, a major third which gives it a whole different kind of feel. To me, that sounds natural. And just taking that very simple formula for myself and expanding upon that, I've learned to develop um, a vocabulary of uh, collections of shapes and just forms that I, that I typically go back to by default and incorporate into my solos and my songwriting. Uh, so I'll just play for a while and show you an example of how I would do something like that. So. Well, for instance, right there, I've got this this little shape, and what which is very you know common blues lick, the like Billy Gibbons thing. And what I would do is take this root note and drop that down chromatically and pedal um, off of this note. So, and as long as I end up back at the root, I'm okay. So. Let's say that, that little lick right there just comes to mind. So what, what I would do off that is go. So I'm just building around those basic square shapes. Uh, square shape being, you know, take that square shape and flatten and sharpen either end of that. Minor, minor or major. Across uh, three octaves. And then end up at the root note. Yeah, one of the first shapes that we all learn is the basic blues box shape, let's say an A. And uh, to show you an example of the way I might embellish that. On the way up, that's pretty much standard shape. On the way down, there's a lot of things I would do. First off, uh, I would take the C and I'd take it up to C sharp. So. When I get down to the G string, I'm at the D sharp instead of the D. So you get that, uh, that flatted fifth effect. Another thing I can do is tap at the 12th fret at the top, so and a lot of times I, I've defaulted to using uh, 
my thumb and second finger, uh, the kind of rudimentary picking, uh, finger picking thing, instead of my pick, and I just kind of put my pick between my two fingers, I do that unconsciously as well. So, uh, and I, what I found is it, 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 uh, it affords you a lot more dynamics in your playing. Uh, so it's not so one dimensional. So, because uh, you get a lot of, you can do a lot of things with uh, your fingers that you can't do with a pick. Um, it's just, it just has a natural kind of muting effect. <laughs> You get this kind of rolling kind of uh, timing that's that, that's really cool when you when you get better at it. Um, I also incorporate a lot of open notes, which uh, quite honestly isn't anything that is uh, theoretically right. Uh, I, I, I don't na necessarily think about the note that I'm leaving open, but I sort of know from doing it a lot what it's going to sound like. So, if again if I'm in an A, uh, and I'm just do a pull off on the B string in that same shape. Uh, and I'll just let the open note ring. Settle someplace else, you know, in this case the major third, so. And, um, you know, I, I can't say there's really a method to my madness, it's just that um, I essentially see the gray areas and shapes and look for places that, alternative places to go. Um, and do it in such a way that I'm doing a, a reoccurring pattern and ending up back at a note that sounds, you know, something that uh, relates to the key you're in. And as long as you do that and you do it twice, it sounds right. Um, no matter how excited it is, I, I found it very difficult to play bad notes these days. Uh, so uh, another example I can give you of playing the blues scale and going outside in A again is uh, something like this. It's really simple, but it's just the same shape all the way up to the B string and back. And there again, I did that hammer on and pull off with the open strings on the G and D string. Which gives it kind of an exotic feel. So to keep things interesting, I'm um, a big fan of Roy Buchanan, Jeff Beck, and uh, you know these are guys that use a lot of so-called tricks, which I like to incorporate as well. Um, uh, one of which is, for instance, double stops, but kind of strange double stops. So in, in A, there's one I particularly like to use because of the kind of double harmonic effect you can get out of it, is um, uh, the C on the E string. And then half a fret down from that on the B string, and you've got this double stop, which already sounds dissonant enough, but stretch it up to where it's not dissonant. It's kind of a variation on the kind of the country lick, which is. So again, it's just, if I was an A playing a blues scale, you know. Uh, it's, 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 I don't even know if that's musically correct, but to me it's, it's, it's cool, it's strange, and it's hard for people to uh, really categorize, which I think is a good thing. And um, it's outside of the box. And it kind of lends personality to your playing. 